What's going on, growers? It's James Brigioni coming to you live from Jersey today. Me and Tucker are going to show you what happens when you plant nine different crops in one square foot. This is interplanting on steroids. Let's go! Me and Tuck are always trying to push the limits, seeing how much food we can grow in a small amount of space. Early this spring, we planted nine different crops in one square foot. On April 20th, we started by transplanting out butter crunch bib lettuce. I planted it in the top left corner of the square because I knew the area would get a bit shaded as the other plants grew and lettuce can grow well in partial shade. Next, I direct sowed mokum carrots in the top middle of the square. I made a very shallow depression in this soil barely even noticeable to the eye because carrots have tiny seeds and don't like to be planted deep. I sowed a few seeds then lightly brushed a bit of soil barely covering the seeds. After planting out the carrots I began direct sowing Alaska salmon nasturtium seeds in the top right corner of my square. I made a small hole with my finger about half of an inch deep. These seeds are a bit smaller than pea seeds. I dropped a few in and covered them up. In the center of my square, I decided to transplant out dazzling blue kale. I wanted the kale to be the main crop of the square. When everything else finishes and is ready to harvest, the kale will be growing deep into the winter and still producing food. After the kale, I began transplanting out some giant of Italy parsley in the middle left of my square. By this time you're probably starting to notice the theme that all these plants I'm growing together are companions with my main crop kale, making for a happy group of plant friends. In the middle right section of my square, I decided to plant golden beets. I made a small depression with my finger about half of an inch deep and planted my beets, then covered them up with a bit of soil. Next, I chose to plant a Stuttgart onion in the bottom left section of my square. The onion was already starting to grow, so I buried the bulb, leaving a bit of the growing tip sticking out of the ground. For the bottom right section of my square, I wanted to plant a Monique shallot. This was also beginning to grow, so like the onion, I planted the shallot, leaving the growing tip above the soil level. Lastly, I picked pink lady slipper radishes to direct sow in the bottom middle of my square, and then covered them with a bit of soil. Then I thoroughly watered in the square to set my transplants in and allow my seeds to germinate. 11 days later, on May 1st, most of my seeds had sprouted and the plants were showing a lot of healthy growth. At this time, I thinned my radish seedlings down to two plants and thinned my beet seedlings down to three plants. All the plants were looking really good and some of my carrot seeds were starting to sprout. 10 days later, on May 11th, all the plants had essentially tripled in size. Some of the lettuce was starting to shade out the carrot seedlings, so I just cut a leaf off to snack on it and give the carrots a bit more light. I also thinned out my carrot seedlings and chose the two healthiest plants. The nasturtium seeds had also sprouted by this time as well. Me and Tuck wanted to take a quick little break to grab a drink of water because it's hot out here. And to mention to check out the merch down at jamesprigioni.com. Grab a summer grow shirt with the California poppy on it or one of the Gardening is Life t-shirts and be part of the team. Here you can see all nine plants growing together happily. Shallots, radishes, onion, beets, nasturtium, carrots, lettuce, parsley, and kale as the centerpiece. Five days later, on May 16th, the plants were in cruise control and were soaking up the spring sun looking healthy and loving life. Two weeks later, the square was basically filled up with plants. Everything was growing beautifully. The lettuce was getting shaded a bit, but was almost ready to harvest. And the radishes, they were so close to being ready to harvest. Two days later, on June 1st, it was time to grab some harvests. The radishes and the lettuce were ready to go. The lettuce was crowding out the carrots a bit, so it was a good day to grab it. The radishes came out perfect. Nice shape, nice color. You can't grow better radishes than that. 11 days later, on June 12th, the square was full and the main crop kale was starting to show its dominance. It's July 12th today, 30 days since we last checked on the plants growing in the square, all nine of them. So we already grabbed our radishes and our lettuce. Now let's grab a few more harvests. For, you can see how everything's still growing in this section. First, let's take this shallot right here, the Monique shallot, let's pop it out. Pretty decent size, especially for the amount of space it had to grow. You love to see it. Nice little shallot there, nice color on it. Next, let's grab the onion. So the onion is right next to it over here. Maybe we could use a bit more time, but let's just grab it to see what it looks like. Not the biggest onion that I've ever grown, but still impressive for 
the small amount of space that it actually had. Next, let's check out the carrot in the back. So we got some carrots back here. You can see tucked right in the center. Let's see if we can get anything on this guy. Really small. Definitely not too impressive, but if I let them go longer, I bet they would have done better. They still look like they needed just a bit more time with the, how little direct sunlight they were getting. Next, let's check out the nasturtium over here. The nasturtium didn't do fantastic. Um, I think some of it has to do with the variety though, where the leaves aren't doing that great. There's some a few flowers that moved over out here. They don't have the color I was looking for, but still relatively impressive for how little space they had. Then let's look at the parsley. The parsley is doing real well. Next to the kale right there, you can see, still got some good parsley leaves that's growing out here. So this is some nice food. And then lastly, we have the beets over here. They look like they still need some more time too, growing just a bit slow with uh, not getting a lot of sunlight. And I, one of the things is I think the kale just grew so quickly. And, you know, kale relatively usually needs at least one square foot to grow. So the fact that we got some of these harvests in the interim while the kale was like, before the kale started reigning supreme, I think is definitely a win. And you'll notice this kale, it was not hindered at all with the other crops growing around it. I mean, this thing is <laughs> absolutely massive. It's, it's insane. This was definitely an extreme version of interplanting or companion planting, but the right idea is here that planting different kinds of plants together forms a lot of beneficial connections and a lot of great things come from it. Let's see if uh, Tuck wants some of this little small carrot. We'll give him a snack of it. He'll take that thing basically in one bite. A bit small, but still really good flavor, he said. There are so many benefits that come from uh, interplanting and companion planting like this, and it, there's such a high value to it. First, you can get more harvest and bigger harvest in smaller amounts of space. Also, when you companion plant, the plants like lettuce, something that likes a little bit of shade, can get shaded out by some of the taller plants, which helps out the lettuce to grow later into the season and in the summer heat a little bit better. Another thing is when you plant all these different kinds of plants together, it definitely makes it more confusing for the pests. When you go into polyculture, stuff like this, imagine you're a pest trying to find the one crop that you love to eat. It's definitely going to be a lot harder as opposed to if you grew in a monoculture where there was just one plant in the whole entire bed, that would be a lot easier to spot if you're a pest. But like this, plants growing in a guild, beneficial connections are formed and crops can help support one another. Another great thing about interplanting is that you're using time to your advantage. For instance, the kale. Typically you would just grow one kale plant in one square foot, but when you interplant like we did, we were able to get some extra harvests while the kale was still small and young. This way we got the most out of that space and didn't have any extra little holes in the garden. We were able to get onions, shallots, radishes, lettuces before the kale was so large that it kind of took over the whole entire square. Would I suggest interplanting this intensely in the future? Probably not to this level, but I still think that you should definitely interplant and companion plant, especially in the square foot method. That's my favorite way to do it. This way, you're still getting all the advantages of companion planting, but the plants still have enough space to really thrive and do well. When you plant this intensely and this dense, there's a few things you're gonna have to take into account. You're going to have to fertilize a bit more than usual because there are so many plants in a small amount of space. You're also going to have to water a little bit more than usual because there's uh, you know, a lot of roots in one small section. But the idea is that you're planting different kinds of plants that support each other, but also take up different areas of space, both above and below ground. It's really similar to the concept of the seven layer food forest where all different kinds of plants occupy different areas so that you're filling up all that space. That's why we planted things like radishes next to the kale. And a great one is also planting radishes next to your um, peppers while those grow slowly. You can get the extra harvest from them, but they just occupy different levels of space so they don't really fight with each other. Instead, they can just grow in harmony with one another. Growing in this fashion is also convenient because you can plant a bunch of different crops all at the same time, yet your harvest is extended over a longer period of time. As opposed to just planting a whole entire bed of one variety of cabbage, all that cabbage would be ready at the same time and then you would have to kind of replace everything in the bed. Instead, when you grow like this and interplant, there's all different crops that are ready at different times based on their maturity. For instance, like we did in the, in the uh, one square foot, 
the radishes were ready after 28 days. Then after those were finished, other plants could fill those gaps in and kind of take up that space while the slower maturing crops are finished. So growing like this truly takes advantage of both space and time. That's today's video growers. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you got something out of it. Tuck found a nice little spot in the shade. It's definitely hot out here now that we're in July. And he's so loyal, he's always out here hanging out in the garden. So make sure you spam some hearts down low for the little boss. We hope you enjoyed the video. It was so much fun to just grow that intense. Nine crops in just one square foot. And I'm actually surprised with how well a lot of the things did. It's definitely better if you go with the square foot method, I think, planting, you know, one kind of crop in one square foot. But then to extrapolate that idea into the whole raised bed, I think it's the best way to grow in my opinion. That's how I plant out all my beds. That's how I grow everything. In, I incorporate different kinds of flowers, different kinds of plants, so that we're getting harvests like over longer periods of times. So we're confusing the pests and there's just so many advantages to it. It also reminds me of the kind of like how Masanobu Fukuoka would approach gardening. He would use time to his advantage. So growing like this, I feel like we're doing that. And uh, anytime we can get a little closer to be doing what Masanobu Fukuoka has done, me and Tuck always want to try to do that. We wanted to send a thank you to one of our new channel members, Kathy Lawrence. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. Thanks for having your hand in everything we're doing out here. And we wanted to mention to check out the merch down at jamesprigioni.com. Grab one of the Grow Summer shirts. We really love the way they came out and be part of the team. We had an absolute blast out of, out of here. We hope you guys got some real value out of it. And again, don't forget to spam those hearts down low for the little boss. Tuck and James will be back again real soon. We out.